Hey folks, KJ here. So today I'd like to talk about what knives best CEDC. I'm going to be sharing my views and opinions on this matter and hopefully help you make a decision on what knife best to EDC. Uh, if you like this video, please hit on the like button below and subscribe to my channel so you get notifications once I have new content. All right, so let's get to it. So on the table, you will see um, my personal choices of my daily EDC rotation. Uh, you might be wondering who that is. That's just my Jon Snow Funko Pop. Why is it on the table? C come on, guys. He's got a sword. If you don't think that's cool, then you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, so the first um, criteria you need to think about when choosing your knife is your applicable local laws. Here in the Philippines, uh, it's basically illegal to be carrying a knife on your person when you're out in public. Um, unless you can justify it for work, that's the only exception that the cops will allow. Uh, in my experience though, um, implementation or enforcement of this law is very subjective and highly dependent on the mood of the cop or security guard that they're facing. Uh, given that, I like to sort of choose more subdued or non-tactical knives as my ADC. Because, for example, if you have the lamentum on your person, which is a very gentlemanly and subdued looking knife, it'd be a lot easier to justify carrying this on your person than if you have something like the Benchmade Bug Out, which just screams tactical all over it. See, it's a very stabby and tactical knife. Um, and it'll be a lot harder to explain why you have this um, on your person when faced with a cop. All right. Um, again, other countries, the rules will vary. So please make sure to uh, research that a little bit before you choose um, the knife that best suits you. Moving on to the next criteria, um, basically the usage. Um, Knives come in a myriad of knife steels um, that have different characteristics, benefits, and whatnot. Um, I'm not going to go through each one. Um, that'll probably take all night. Uh, but you can Google. Um, there are a lot of resources out there with um, different knife steels, their strengths, benefits, and all that good stuff. Um, but for my purposes, living in the city, budget steels are absolutely fine. I mean, I wouldn't go any lower than 8CR13 MOV. Um, I believe that blade steel has decent edge resistance and corrosion resistance as well. Um, and will suit my knees just fine. Um, obviously, premium steels are better. But premium steels often come with premium price tags. Um, and they're not really necessary in EDC. I mean, a pre difference of a premium steel. This one, for example, is the Spyderco Watt 2. This one comes in... If you can see CPM 20 CV, it just means that the edge retention is a lot better um, and will, will not see the surface of a sharpening stone as often as probably your HCR 13 MOV over there. Right? I mean, obviously, as a collector, as a nice enthusiast, you'd like to have those in your collection, um, but those normally sit in my drawer all day. I just play with them when I'm at home, not really for EDC purposes, guys. All right. Then obviously, if you live in near the sea, for example, you'd like a highly corrosion resistant knife steel. Um, so D2 may not be your best choice. D2 is a uh, steel that you'll find in most Civivi models nowadays. Um, edge retention is really good, but it sacrifices um, corrosion resistance on the material. So this will rust on you if you're not careful. So just make sure to wipe it down or clean it up whenever you use it. Um, again, not a great choice if you're more of the outdoors type or if you live somewhere near the sea where the corrosion might just eat up your knife all day. My next criteria is what I'd like to call usability. Um, it's basically how ergonomic the knife is, um, the geometry of the blade, I typically like choosing drop point blades for my EDC knives just because it has a good match of having a decent tip as well as having a belly for your slices. Um, this is the classic drop point shape. Um, a drop point just means that um, the point literally drops. Obviously, right? I mean, this is a classic drop point shape as you see in the Civilian Elemental over here. 
Um, it has a good tip, has a good belly, um, so it can do your pierces when you're cutting into packages, and your slicing is good to go as well since it has a decently sized belly over here. All right, so let's put that back over there. And the last thing in my criteria is price. Um, obviously, again, going back to Philippine law, um, carrying of knives is not allowed. So I'd like to choose something that's fairly inexpensive, um, something I can easily replace. If in case, worst case scenario, I need to um, leave my knife with the cop or the security guard who for some reason found out in my person. Um, now you might think, why don't I just get a knockoff? I mean, knockoffs come up at what thousand bucks or two thousand bucks at most. Um, it's a knife, it's sharp, it'll cut. Uh, if I lose it, big deal. Guys, come on, you deserve a better knife than a knockoff. Um, knockoffs have really no quality control to speak of, um, and they're made with questionable materials. Um, since they're knockoffs, they will brand them as the um, well, the brand that they're copying, and they will label the blade as being in that steel as well. Um, this one, for example, is a knockoff of Paramilitary 2. Um, it's branded at S30V. Obviously, it's not. I mean, look at it. It, it rattles, it shakes, it... it, 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 it it's bent. If you notice, the tip is actually leaning that direction. Um, the build quality is very questionable. Um, the lockup is almost non-existent. It barely locks up in that compression. Um, so it's really not the best knife to have um, on your day-to-day -day use. And again, you guys, we're, we're buying a knife for you to use. So um, obviously, you'd want something that has great quality, good um, build and fit and finish um, in your everyday use. So having said all that, I mean, these five knives fit in those categories or criteria that I've just mentioned, um, starting off with the Spyderco Tenacious. Um, this one's made in China. Um, you might think, you know, a Spyderco made in China, maybe the quality is not that good. Um, that may have been true in the past, but I got this knife just this year, and I have to say the fit and finish is really good, guys. I mean, um, the Tenacious has that uh, reputation of being a budget knife. It's cheap. Um, if you look at it, fit and finish is really good. Um, everything is flush. The blade centering is perfect. Um, the action on it is really good as well. Fits open and drops shut. Uh, that's made in HCR 13 MOV, so among all of these steels, that will need the most um, tender loving care on your sharpening stones. Uh, moving up, I have the uh, Para 3 Lightweight. This one comes in BD1 and steel. Uh, edge retention and corrosion resistance are fairly good. Um, I got this about two to three months ago, and I think I've sharpened it once or twice. No, twice, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it holds up really well. Um, holds a sharp edge. This one has a polished edge, if you can see, that I made on my Lansky Diamond system. Um, so yeah, that's good to go. Has a compression lock as well, so it's very fidgety and fun to play with. Uh, here we have the Civivi Aluminum. I mean, it's a very popular, more gentlemanly carry kind of knife. Um, has a flipper tab and deploys like this. Um, it's a liner lock um, and it folds by pushing out the liner to the side and folding it down. This one comes with bearings. Most CVV knives actually run on bearings compared to your phosphor bronze washers that you see on these spider coats. Um, it being bearings, obviously their wheels, they're round, they roll really, really smoothly. So you get really nice action when you're deploying your CVV elemental. Drop shut blade as well. Um, next on the list, I have the Spyderco Little Native. If you watch my review of this knife, you'll know this is my absolute favorite knife. Um, just because the ergonomics are really, really great. Um, the steel on this one is S30V. Um, so that's a jack of all trades of steel, which has really good edge retention, corrosion resistance, and toughness. So this will not give up on you anytime soon. Uh, again, it has a compression lock, so it 
unfolds and deploys very, very easily, very, very smoothly each and every time. Um, there. All right. Last on my list, I have the Civivi Odium. Uh, this is my most recent purchase among all of these, actually. And it's uh, been released fairly recently. If you notice, it's about the size of the little native, which um, was the appeal to me, as it's also really, 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 really tiny. Right? Um, this one has a flipper tab as well, so it deploys like that. Um, it has uh, thumb grip over here as well. So it can spider flick like that and the locks with a liner lock here as well uh, to unlock it you just push that away and it'll fold just like that similarly it runs on bearings so it is very very smooth deployment and folding okay now um i'd like to talk a little bit about self-defense i mean if ever anyone thinks about using this knife for self-defense i mean you can um, but obviously they won't be my first choice since uh, they're not very tactical in nature and guys if you want to use a knife for self-defense I mean you gotta be sure that you're ready to actually hurt someone you know what I mean um, it's not a small thing to inflict pain on someone else um, so in my opinion um, knives for self-defense are more of a deterrent um, I mean it's to scare off your potential attacker and whatnot and actually avoid the conflict altogether now none of these knives will scream tactical none of these knives will get your opponent screaming away in fear when they see you have your cute little odium for example right here right i mean no one will be scared of that so for that purpose i actually carry a more robust knife but this one just lives in my car right again this is a deterrent just to scare them away now, how do I do that? I do that with this guy over here. So this is the Cold Steel Raja 2. I mean, this is not an ADC knife, guys. I mean, look at it. It's huge. It's thick. You need two hands to deploy it. But yeah, I mean, if your opponent sees this, I bet you they'll run screaming. All right, so again, um, just as a deterrent guys let's not um use violence to solve any problems um but yeah i just have this in my car just for that one-off situation where i maybe need to scare someone away okay now that's all i got for you today guys i uh, hope you found this interesting hope that i help you out uh, make your decision on which knife best suits you thanks take care bye bye